Hello everyone, Pixeled Monk here, and welcome to an old school RuneScape guide showing you how to complete the quest Desert Treasure. This quest is considered master difficulty and is very long length, about 2 hours. The requirements for this quest include 53 thieving, 50 fire making, 50 magic, 10 slayer, completion of the dig site, Temple of Ikov, the tourist trap, troll stronghold, priest in peril, and waterfall quest. The ability to defeat five ice trolls, Camille, Dessus, Farid, and Damus. The required items for this quest include 2,000 coins, 12 magic logs noted, 6 steel bars noted, 6 molten glass noted, ashes, charcoal, blood rune, bones noted, cake or chocolate cake, spiked boots, climbing boots, Unless you have completed Eager's Ruse and have 61 magic, bring a Trollheim teleport instead. Garlic, 50 or more lockpicks, silver bar, spice, pestle and mortar, face mask or slayer helm, and a tinderbox. Although not required, it is highly recommended that you also have high healing food like shark, anti-poison or super anti-poison, super energy and stamina potions, prayer potions, Super Restore Potions, Desert Clothing, Ring of Dueling, Dig Site Teleports, Full Water Skins, Ice Gloves, Games Necklace, Amulet of Glory, Slayer Ring, Draymond or Lunar Staff, Weight Reducing Gear, and Druid Pouch with Charges. There are many items that are needed to complete this quest and you may not be able to fit everything in your inventory at the same time. As we go through the quest, I'll tell you which items you need to bring during that portion of it, meaning that we'll be going to the bank often. There are some maps in the description below that will help you to identify some of the key points of this quest. Open it up to keep it handy. For the first portion of the quest, be sure to bring the 2000 coins, water skins, Ashes, Blood Rune, Bones, Charcoal, Molten Glass, Magic Logs, Steel Bars, Ring of Dueling, Games Necklace, Dig Site Teleport, and Desert Clothing. To start the quest, you must first go to the Bedabin Camp. The easiest way to get there is by using a Ring of Dueling to the Duel Arena and then walk south to Shantae Pass. Buy a Shantae Pass and walk through. Travel with the rug merchant to the east and go to Bedabin Camp. Once there, talk to the archaeologist who should be standing nearby you. When prompted, say, do you have any quests? And, yes, I'll help you. He will give you etchings. Now use your dig site teleport and walk south to the exam center. Talk to the archaeological expert inside. When prompted, select Ask About the Desert Treasure Quest. He will take the etchings. Talk to him again to receive a book. Afterwards, read the book and then head back to the archaeologist at the Bedabin camp. Once there, talk to the archaeologist. When prompted, select Don't Read Book. Talk to him again and when prompted, select Help Him. Afterwards, walk directly south to the bandit camp. Go inside of the bar and talk to the bartender. When prompted, select buy a drink and buy a beer. Talk to him again. When prompted, say, I've heard about four diamonds. Talk to him one more time and when prompted, say, I've heard of the diamonds of Azanadra. After the conversation, you'll need to talk to Eblis. He is located a few steps east of the bar. When prompted, say, Tell me of the four diamonds of Azanadra. Yes, and? 
Yes, I will go get those for you. Use the ashes, blood rune, bones, steel bars, molten glass, magic logs, and charcoal on Eblis to give him the items. After you have given him all the items, talk to him again. Now walk southeast until you come across a circle of mirrors. Talk to Eblis who has relocated nearby the mirrors. Afterwards, talk to him again. The mirrors are used to find the locations of each of the diamonds. Click on each of the mirrors to look in them. Now is the time to start collecting the diamonds, but first you'll need a bank. So use your games necklace to the barbarian outpost and use a bank nearby. Be sure to grab several noted anti-poisons, noted food, and 30 noted lockpicks. Also bring in a thousand coins, games necklace, ring of dueling, unnoted anti-poison, unnoted food, and as many unnoted lockpicks as you can hold. Once you have finished banking, walk south towards the fishing guild. You will come across an NPC named Rosolo. Talk to him. When prompted, say, ask about the diamonds of Azanadra, and yes. Now you'll have to head back to the bandit camp. Once there, go into the most southern building of the camp. The next part of this quest requires that you open the secure chest in this building. However, attempting to open it is very difficult. Each failure will result in a lost lockpick and hit points damage. You may even be poisoned. If you run out of lockpicks, potions, or food, go to the general store in town and unnote your items with tiles for a fee. Use a lockpick on the secure chest to attempt to open. When you are successful, you will receive a gilded cross. This may take many attempts and several minutes to accomplish. Once you have it, use your games necklace and go to the bank in the Barbarian Outpost. Empty your Inventory and Worn Equipment tab. Be sure to grab Magic Gear, plenty of runes for your best Earth spells, Stamina and Super Energy potions, 20 to 30 doses of prayer potions, the Gilded Cross, an Anti-Poison, an Amulet of Glory, and the rest of your inventory filled with high healing food. From this point forward, you may randomly be attacked by a level 95 stranger who has the ability to poison you. He may appear at any time and will attack if you have any of the diamonds in your inventory, even immediately after you pick it up. Be sure to always have an anti-poison ready if needed. In order to obtain the Shadow Diamond, go back to Rosolo. Talk to Rosolo, who will exchange the cross for a ring of visibility. Equip the ring and walk to the fenced-in area nearby. For this next part of the quest, I highly recommend opening up the maps in the description. You'll be running past level 80 giant skeletons and level 63 shadow hounds. These are aggressive, so you may want to use protect from melee while in this dungeon. Let's also talk about the upcoming fight. You'll be fighting two forms of Damus, level 103 and level 174. He is weak to earth spells and using protect from melee is essential as his max hit can reach 22. His first form is fairly easy to defeat, but his second is challenging. His second form will drain your prayer very quickly. Use prayer potions when necessary. Be warned that this is a multi-combat area, so the giant skeletons and shadow hounds may attack you at the same time. Climb down the ladder when ready. Follow the map until you reach a large open area.
run around this area, and Damus will appear. Defeat him and pick up the shadow diamond he drops. Teleport out when you have it and bank. Be sure to put your shadow diamond in the bank immediately. This will prevent the stranger from attacking you and it'll keep the diamond safe in case you die. Empty everything from your inventory. Be sure to grab a cake or chocolate cake, spiked boots, climbing boots or Trollheim teleport, magic gear, 3 to 5 super restore potions, prayer potions, anti poison, super energy and stamina potions, lots of food, a one click teleport, games necklace, and runes for firebolt as your magic will be drained. Ibn's Blast, Flames of Zamorak, and Trident of the Seas will not work for this portion of the quest. In order to obtain the Ice Diamond, you'll need to go to Trollheim. If you have the ability to teleport there, do it now. If not, teleport to Burthorpe using a Games Necklace. Again, using the map in the description will be very helpful. Once there, go west and follow the path up to Tenzing's house. Climb over the stile and continue on until you reach the base of Trollheim. Turn on Protect from Missiles and run north until a northern path opens up. Enter the path and then turn off your prayer. If you teleported here, get down the mountain and take the northern path. This will lead you to an ice gate. Right click on the cake and select Use. Then use a cake on the troll child nearby. Afterwards, talk to him. When prompted, say yes. For this next part of the quest, all of your stats will be drained and you won't be able to run. You must kill five ice trolls in this area. They're pretty strong, so using protect from melee will be helpful. Use a super restore potion to bring your stats up back temporarily to help with the fight. When ready, go through the ice gate, but the troll child will stop you. Click on the gate again to go through. Once you have defeated all five, go back through the ice gate to take a breather and check your inventory to see if you are ready for the next fight. If not, return to a bank. Let's talk about the fight. You'll be facing Camille, level 154. He is weak to fire spells and attacks with melee and magic. Protect from melee will be very helpful in this fight. Camille will freeze you in place and teleport you, so attacking at a distance won't work. In the location of the fight, you will be drained of your stats quite a bit, so be sure to keep an eye out for this and pot up with super restores and prayer potions when necessary. When ready, go back through the ice gate and enter the cave to the east. Follow the path until you come across a large area. Camille will appear. Defeat him. Afterwards, equip your spiked boots and continue walking west. You'll be on a path that is hard to see, but follow the path on the map provided until you come across an ice ledge. Click on the ice ledge to climb over. Follow the ice path until you reach the top. However, you may fall and take some damage while doing so. Use a super restore to boost up your agility to make this a little easier. Once there, go through the ice gate and continue till the end of the path. You will see two trolls encased in ice blocks. 
use Fire Blast on the blocks to open them. When they are free, the trolls will teleport you back to the troll child and will give you the Ice Diamond. Use the minigame teleport to Clan Wars. Go into the portal to the west to restore all of your stats, then exit and use the bank nearby. Empty your inventory and grab an anti-poison, tinderbox, face mask or slayer helm, magic gear or melee gear, ring a dueling, a one-click teleport, several super energy and stamina potions, food, per potions, 205 coins, ice gloves, and runes for water spells. Trident of the Seas and Trident of the Swamp will not work for this portion of the quest. In order to obtain the Smoke Diamond, you must first travel to Polnivnić. You can easily do so by traveling to the Shantae Pass and then using the Magic Carpet Ride to Polnivnić. Be sure to equip your face mask or Slayer Helm and Ice Gloves now. Once there, walk west out of the city until you reach a well. Climb down the well. In each corner of this dungeon are torches that must be lit with your tinderbox. These will burn out if you take too long to light all of them. When they are all lit, you must also reach a chest in the center of the dungeon before time runs out. As long as you keep your run energy up, this will be pretty easy. When you see the standing torches, use your tinderbox on them to light. It is a good idea to start on the eastern side of the dungeon and then move on to the western side as the western side is closer to the chest. When all the torches are lit, head to the burnt chest in the center of the dungeon and open it to receive a key. When ready, light all of the torches. When you have the key, you no longer have to worry about running. Walk to the far eastern side of the dungeon to a gate. Let's talk about the fight. You'll be facing Farid, level 167. He is weak to water spells and attacks with magic and melee. Using protect from melee is highly recommended as he can hit in the 30s. If you die while fighting him, you'll lose the key. However, you'll not have to go back and light the torches or obtain the key to continue. Use a key on the gate to start the fight. Defeat Farid to obtain the smoke diamond. When you have it, teleport out and go to a bank. Deposit everything from your inventory and worn equipment. Be sure to grab a silver bar, garlic, pestle and mortar, spice, pura potions, anti-poison, amul of glory, slayer ring, and draymond or lunar staff. First, you must travel to Canifis. An easy way to get there is by using a slayer ring to the relic of slayer caves. Then use the fairy ring outside to code CKS, and then walk east. Walk towards a bar and a cutscene will occur. Go inside the bar and talk to Malak. When prompted, say, I am looking for a special diamond. Yes, and? How do I kill Dessus? Next, use your Amulet of Glory and teleport to Drainer Village. Walk slightly east to a trap door. Climb down it. Follow the path north to an open area and talk to Ruinton. You'll turn your silver bar into a silver pot. When done, you will now need to go to Entrana. So, climb back up the ladder you came in at. Use the bank nearby to deposit any kind of armor and weapons that you might have on. When ready, head to the Port Serum docks just west of Drainer Village. Once there, right-click on one of the monks and select Take Boat.
walked to the church, which is on the eastern side of the island. Use your silver pot on the high priest to have it blessed. When complete, go back to the Canopus Bank. Keep everything in your inventory currently, but also grab a gear setup that is resistant to magic, such as arums or dehyde, a weapon that can hit with magic, range, and or stab, such as a DDS. Lots of high healing food and a druid pouch with charges. Super energy and stamina potions. When ready, talk to Malak again. He will fill the pot up with your blood. Afterwards, use the garlic on the pestle and mortar to grind it. Then use the garlic powder and spice on the pot of blood. Now you'll be heading towards a fight in the graveyard. There are several ways to get there, so be sure to check the maps provided for help. If you have completed In Search of the Mire Key quest, you may take a shortcut using the trapdoor just behind the bar in Canifis. Let's talk about the fight. You'll be facing a level 139 Decius. He is weak to stab, magic, and range, and can hit you with all attack styles. He has the ability to hit you for 19 hit points with his rapid melee attack, so using protect from melee while fighting him is highly recommended. He'll teleport to you constantly, so fighting from a distance will not work. If you have brought a DDS, use a special attack on him to make the fight a little easier. When ready, use your pot of blood on the vampire tomb and Decius will appear. Defeat him. When complete, go back to Canifis. Once there, talk to Malak. He will give you the blood diamond. Use a bank nearby to deposit it. If you are low on your stats, use a minigame teleport back to Clan Ward and use a portal nearby to heal up. Deposit everything from your inventory and worn equipment tab. Grab all four diamonds, the ice diamond, blood diamond, shadow diamond, and the smoke diamond. Equipment that has a prayer bonus such as helm of natizna and monk robes. A lightweight weapon such as a DDS, dragon defender. Weight reducing gear such as graceful. Two prayer potions, super anti-poison. Stamina and super energy potions. One full water skin. 205 coins ring of dueling, food, and an emergency teleport out. For this next part of the quest, you won't have to fight anything. However, you will be running past aggressive level 110 mummies and level 124 scarabs that will appear spontaneously. These enemies use melee only, so flicking protect from melee might be helpful. The scarabs also have the ability to poison you and stop you from moving for a short period of time. When they do this, try to run away from them as fast as you can. Be warned that since you have all the diamonds in your inventory, the level 95 stranger could attack at any moment. When you're ready, head back to Eblis at the Six Mirrors just outside of the bandit camp. Once there, talk to Eblis. Afterwards, walk south to the pyramid. Now you'll need to use the diamonds on the four obelisks to place them. The blood diamond goes into the northwestern obelisk. The shadow diamond goes into the southwestern obelisk. The ice diamond goes into the southeastern obelisk. The smoke diamond goes into the northeastern obelisk. Once complete, go to the top of the pyramid and enter the door. Before continuing, I've included maps that will greatly help you with the next part, as you'll be running through four mazes. Each time you enter a new level of the maze, be sure to click on your compass to get your map back to north so it's easier to follow the maps. There are traps throughout the mazes that will teleport you back to the beginning of the pyramid if you sit still for too long. 
If at any point you are teleported out of the pyramid, return to the front door and start over. This portion of the quest can be very frustrating, but try to be patient. When you climb the ladder down, be ready to run. When ready, continue down the ladder. When you have successfully reached the center of the fourth floor, enter the door and talk to Azanadra to complete the quest. Congratulations, you have received three quest points, 20,000 magic experience, and the ability to use ancient magics. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this guide and found it helpful. If you did, please subscribe for more and I'll see you next time.